And I'd like to call this regular meeting of council to order for April 26, 2022 at 7 p.m. Stay seated for a moment of silent reflection. Now this evening, I would like to acknowledge on behalf of Council and our community that we are meeting on the traditional territory of the Algonquin people. We would like to thank the Algonquin people and express our respect and support for their rich history. And we are extremely grateful for their many and continued displays of friendship. <clears throat> we also thank all the generations of people who have taken care of this land for thousands of years. Oh, we'll move on to the mayor's address. With COVID restrictions lifted, Renfrew County is experiencing a rise in the number of positive COVID cases, resulting in more hospitalizations. The ability to conduct business without masking is inviting for many residents. However, masks are still one of the best tools to limit transmission of the virus. The Recreation Committee met on April 11, 2022 to review and plan activities for the spring, summer, and fall. Staff is working on plans for some new events and activities to promote social interaction after two years of limitations. Plans for a summer swim program are dependent on the recruitment of qualified swim instructors. Work will be undertaken along the Wilkins Trail to allow crews to move the new observation gazebo into place this spring. It is hoped that it can be in use by June. North Dakota Wilberforce Fire Department hosted an open house to Golden Lake Fire Hall to showcase their newly renovated hall and the newly acquired bumper truck, which arrived in November of 2021. Members of the department provided activities for the children in a live education demonstration. Special thanks to Chief Champ and members of the fire department for hosting this event. And I would just like to add that uh, in talking to Chief Champ after, he said that uh, the event he felt was well attended and that uh, he was very proud and council should be proud as well of the great job that the volunteers did. So I just wanted to pass that on. Registration for the AMO conference and early registration rates are available until May 13th, 2022. And a special meeting of county council was held on April 20th, 2022. Mr. Gary Scanlon of Watson and Associates Economists Limited presented information on development charges, which can be utilized to fund significant growth related issues in a number of areas, including roads, bridges, culverts, long term care, paramedic, and community services. And a copy of the presentation is attached. That is the uh, mayor's address. I have a uh, motion that the April 26, 2022 mayor's address be accepted as presented. Can I get a word of second? Moved by Councillor Buckwald, seconded by Councillor Robinson. Buckwald? Yes. yes. Councillor Burns? Yes. Councillor Robinson? Yes. Councillor Wright Yes. And yes, that's carried. Thank you. Are there any declarations of pecuniary interest in the general nature thereof? Seeing none, then we will move on to the adoption of the minutes for the regular council meeting of April 5th, 2022. I have a motion that they be accepted as presented. Could have been a move in a second and moved by Councilor Burns, seconded by Council Robin. Are there any additions, corrections, or omissions? Seeing none, Council Buckwald? Yes. Yeah. Council Burns? Yes. Yeah. Council Robinson? Yes. Council Rector Schoenfeld? Yes. Any yes? yes. Carried. Yes. So our delegation with uh, Wishart Law and Pakistan has been postponed. Uh, the resolution then for the communications tower, are we deferring that? So the recommendation of council is to finish District of Pong and I'll attend this meeting and I know council wanted to have this opinion. So we're suggesting that we defer the resolution to the next year. And you can have to focus on a report council. What it is that uh, the uh, item be deferred. 
spending 7.1 month from April 20 and can I get a move? Moved by Councilor Robinson, seconded by Councilor Brown. Uh, I have a question if you need to do this. My understanding is I know we do one application if there's been some concern raised about public, um, but there doesn't seem to be other applications that we could be the leader of one of them this evening. Would that be appropriate? Not that we've not that we heard from, from council, but I believe the opinion was going to be on the the second one, not the first one. Um, before making a decision, I would really like to hear from what Paul and his turn has to say about the telephones. Even though there was um, not a lot of public input with one and one, but, but I mean, if we're deferring one, I, I just assume to for the other one. So that's my opinion. Your comments from council. I tend to agree that we were looking for a legal opinion, and I would, I would prefer to wait until we actually hear the opinion. So, if there's no other uh, comments or questions, I'll cancel that. Are we going to have a similar resolution for 7.2, or can we include them both in the same? So, the mayor, yes, both in the there are separate resolutions. It is separate. Okay. Thank you. Hey, Council Buckley? Uh, no. Council Birch? Yes. Council Robinson? Yes. Council Reckon Chantel? Yes. I mean, yes. So that is the truth. And I have a motion that Council of Township of Marshall is hereby to be writing 7.2. On the April 26th agenda, and that's in regards to the Rogers Communication Tower at Fronts in Front Road and Murphy Hill, site CA 512. Any kind of move here by Council Buckle, seconded by Council Robinson. Comments or questions? Council Buckle? Yes. Council Burnt? Yes. Council Robinson? Yes. Council Rekichenko? Yes. Uh, yes, right. that's the third in here. And on to report, we have 7.3, the CBO reports. Uh, my council accepts the CBO report as presented. And I'm going to move to the second. Council Burn, second is up. Good news, lots of work so far. I'll call the vote. Councillor Buckwell. Councillor Bird. Yeah. Councillor Robinson. Yes. Councillor Rackie Tonto. Yeah. Oh, yes. Thank you. And 7.4 is the bylaw report. I have a motion that Council accepts the bylaw report as presented. Can I get a move right second move by Councilor Robinson, second by Councilor Buckley? Comments or questions? Seeing none, Councilor Buckley? Yes. Councilor Burnt? Yes. Councilor Robinson? Yes. Councilor Rekhi Chonko? Yes. Any yes? Carry. Thank you. Seven point five is the fire department report. I have a motion to council accept the fire department report that presented and declares four model one two two five radios as surplus. Can I move over to seconder? Moved by Councilor Rackinson. I'll second by. Council Burns. So when um, items are declared surplus, do they just get advertised somewhere, or what? What happens to the what happens to the surplus? What I guess what I'm saying how's that first? Yes, so through the mayor, you can have a bylaw where you disposal surplus equipment, and 
in most cases, it is a, a public uh, process. There are some exceptions, but in most cases, it's a public sale. If time to time question, if there's so much of the fire department that they have any value to anybody else? And we have Any other comments or questions? Councilor Buckley? Yes. Councilor Burns? Yes. Councilor Robinson? Yes. Councilor Reggie Shinko? Yes. Item yeah. 7.6 is the CEMC report. I have a motion of council accepts the spring flooding report as information. And then we're going to the council writer song called second by council questions. How much your question? Okay, now Councilor Buckwell. Yes. Councilor Burns. Yes. Councilor Robinson. Yes. Councilor Reckon Shonko. Yes. Yes. It's Harry. Item seven point seven is curbside collection, and the motion that council accepts the curbside waste collection report and directs the clerk treasurer to bring a report to council for the first meeting of council in August, and that the cost of the report will not exceed five thousand. Did I get a word with a second? Moved by council Burnt, seconded by. Me. Um, I'm, I'm just curious because we don't really want to go here. We're looking at for the entire municipality, or we're looking to go areas. Um, I know this, this is an issue that's gone on since I was on council for over 50 years ago. I think that we can come back and much on these studies to decide whether or not it's feasible or not. And I get the question if there's a need for it at this point. Uh, certainly, without a much better tool on the proposal. I also have a hard time with just the amount $5,000. That seems like a lot, and we haven't budgeted for it. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's one of those things where it would be nice to talk to a number of different people because to me, there's going to be a cost associated with that. And there are, Lots of other things complain how hard it taxes are, so now it's simply a further burden on them. I can't really see it um, <clears throat> being able to cover the cost without passing on some of that cost to our retailers. And uh, personally, I just think at this time, I would not want to pursue with this simply because $5,000 is a lot of money on something like that. So, what I said, we've talked about it before, and I can't see the prices. The prices to me are going to even be greater than they were before simply because gas is on up so much and insurance is on up so much. And, you know, uh, I mean, if we're trying to help maybe the rate payers, maybe we'll look at other large dump days or something like that as opposed to. I do have an issue with it, not because the concept of curbside is it's, um, healing. However, just in general, it's a very expensive um, outlay. And when you're looking at trying to minimize the impact on our taxpayers, this would be the concept is nice, but it's just not a feasible step to move forward, even. And then paying five thousand dollars to say yay or nay. I think it's just interesting this time. Councilor Burke. I brought this back to Dr. Michelle about this, and it's not it's not that council has to do a study on this. I brought this back from the other fellow race on the board I'm on there with. And he said all we township has to do is put it out for tenders. Just, just draw them for tenders, pick up tenders, and the contract for that tenders work, they have to do the work. So if they're about to come to $5,000 and pick it up for tenders and see where the tenders come in. At. But the reason I didn't go any further with it, what's going to happen with the recycling down the road? Always, like Igerville has two days pickup, one for garbage and one for recycling. So that's why I didn't take it any further because. I think it's going on. 
So just for council information, and I, I put this on the agenda because information was given to the mayor that, that the council, or so at least one council, was interested in. The study of the five thousand dollars. It's not as small as just getting tenders. You have to investigate the closure costs of the transfer sites that you have, the decommissioning of those transfer sites, the sale of your assets. If there is a large financial layout and it's perpetual care for a world of perpetual care forever. So this the reason why the five thousand dollars is you have to find if there's a need, and then you have to bring back the real information. Because if it did come before council, it was three dollars a bag. You say, well, that's not too bad. We'll know it's a lot more than three dollars a bag because you have to decommission your site. Too. So it was just put it before council that if you want to study, it's not a simple study. It's actually a big study. Of course, I think realistically, looking at the timing, um, we're not going to be able to wouldn't be able to make a final decision on this anyway before the election. So. Again, we'd be starting something for the previous council to finish. And again, if some or all of us aren't here, then the deprivation started from track the end with the review. Um, again, I, I don't see the cost coming in as anything reasonable for our municipality because of our size and the property of the um, I think that brings up the name that I'm probably looking at. And you know, I'm usually wanting to. We can present that council, but I think this is something that we can't decide on and make a decision this year. Anyway. So I think that's the best. And I guess I would just say, and I, I agree with Council Burns that there's a number of unknowns, one of them being the government is moving to the uh, producer responsibility for the Blue Box program. That's changes are supposed to start taking place this year, I think, in four regions. <coughs> And then the rest of the regions will be uh, brought on board by 2025. So we don't know where that's going. I mean, the Ottawa Valley Waste Recovery Site could end up one of the options that they have to look at is they could become a uh, transfer station or a transfer site. And it would be just for collection. And then that uh, recycling may go to a Pringo Ontario, Pringo anywhere in the province, really. So, it's true, there's a lot of unknowns right now. And the other thing I know when we look at this in our last term of council, one of the challenges is that when contractors price it out, they price according to the number of pickups. Man will want to address pickups. So the challenge is for seasonal residents, you pay for that pickup 12 months of the year, whether there's anybody there or not. So that was one of the cost concerns was that, you know, we have a lot of properties that are a lot of people that are seasonal residents. So again, it uh, creates a bit of an uncertainty. Anyway, those are just, just my comments. Anything else? Then I will call the vote. Councilor Buckle? No. Councilor Burns? No. Councilor Robinson? No. That's the right to No. Yeah, I don't know. So that's the thing. That brings us seven point eight, which is our uh, RFP. I have a motion that council accepts this report and awards RFP 2022 PW05, excluding fog sale to Greenwood Tate and Pembroke Limited in the amount of $444,339.71, including HST, and that's for Crooked Rapids Road. Okay, then we're going to by Council Burns, seconded by Council Buckle. Comments or questions? That's the right to talk about. And why didn't we want frog seal on that for the rubbishing? Because I want to sign it. Uh, so we're through the mayor. Council had asked for the protest that we look at um, bin fog seal in urban areas. So when we did a price, we got the option of the fog seal. 
um, Cricket Rapids is not really an urban area. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Being none, Councilor Buckle? Yes. Councilor Burns? Yes. Councilor Robinson? Yes. Councilor Rangers Lonsall? Yes. Uh, yes. That's fair. Thank you. Item 7.9 is Black Point Road. I have a motion that Council accepts this report and awards RFP 2022 PW0 to H and H Construction Inc. for $212,129.25, including HSC. And further, Council approves the expenditure of $30,000 plus HSC for 1,200 tons of A gravel and additional grading and compaction. And I got over in a second. Moved by Councilor Rector Schoenfeld, seconded by Councilor Buckwell. Comments or questions? Andrew? I do have a mention to the provider. The council probably doesn't hear what I'm going to see when I'm going I can't recommend it to conscience to council, but to council that you approve it as the original 2000 or 212,000 without adding at least three more inches of gravel. So I could add the three inches long, so that was not there before. Um, Black Point Road is extremely heavy traffic, and the way the tender was written is there would be four inches of gravel plus the compacted um, reclaimed asphalt. I would be extremely cautious in, in accepting that as enough uh, base for that road, given the traffic of that road and the heavy traffic. Um, so we are recommending that you add three more inches of gravel to crawl in your homes and the compacting of that ground and grade. We're very confident. I think it's a very good investment for council to address this now, rather than, you know, come in spring and you've got problems. But that wouldn't be added on to the... Correct. Okay. So there'd be additional um, expenditure. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Buckwell. Yeah. Councilor Burns? Yes. Councilor Robinson? Yes. Councilor Reggie Swanson? Yes. And yes, that's carried. Thank you. And 7.10 is RFP for Burnt Road. I have a motion that Council accepts this report and awards RFP 2022 PW04, excluding fog seal to RGT Cuche Construction Limited for $115,118.36, including HSC. And I have a little bit of second by Councilor Buckwald, seconded by Councilor Robinson. Comments or questions? Being done, Councilor Buckwald. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah. Andrew, where are they sharing that on the So, Seven point seven point. Yeah, and it is the same degree that was that was back last year. Um, to be honest, I haven't been there with with um, Mr. O'Neill, but it is that area just before the hill where we where we looked at before and that you address you had brought forward to this kind of work. Any other questions? Councilor Buckwell. Yes. Councilor Burns? Yes. Councilor Robinson? Yes. Councilor Reckless Wonko? Yes. And the yes? Terry? Item 7.11 is our Rural Community Cooperative. I have a motion that Council accepts the Rural Community Cooperative report as presented and authorizes the clerk treasurer to sign the support letter on behalf of council to participate in the joint digital main street application. And further, that council authorizes the special projects coordinator to share the digital affordable housing survey with township residents and create a local needs assessment with the results be used for applying for grants. And I'm gonna move here in a second. Robinson seconded by council Schoenfeld. Comments or questions? Being that, Councilor Huntsville? Yes. Councilor Burke? Yes. Councilor Robinson? Yes. Councilor Reggie Schoenfeld? Yes. And yes, that's fair. Yep. Item 
item number nine is correspondence. I have a motion and correspondence items 9.1.1 to 9.1.6 be accepted as information. And I got to move into second, moved by Councillor Kern, seconded by Councillor Robinson. So I read the line for 9.3 acting Ontario Fire Marshal, where I guess the, they tried to address the concerns of all the volunteer fire departments. So I read it several times, and maybe Councillor Buckle can help me, but it doesn't appear that anything really, really has changed to the, uh, the through Tim Beck and acting Ontario Fire Marshal. When I read the last paragraph, it just says, I'm pleased that we have been able to work so collaboratively with municipalities, but it doesn't seem like they really helped with textbooks, or I don't see any monies that they're trying to get. It just it seems like they're just giving a letter that really means nothing. I'm taking that to be right, and I read it over that several times, and it doesn't seem it's given us any. I don't, I don't see what there's any changes. That's right. Um, you know, I haven't really been following the file from right. the having back from the chief's call with that. Right. Um, but then all that it sounded like the chiefs were trying to get some information like maybe textbooks or mm -hmm. some kind of one-time funding and stuff like that. And it just says mandatory certification on Ontario will be validated as a training that firefighters receive and in turn will create safer communities. Yeah. But it doesn't really say for a small fire department that they're going to give us any kind of funding. You know, we've talked about the textbooks, but it didn't really say Supports that can provide your procurement of textbooks and other materials, but it didn't really say that I have a lending library or any of that stuff. So I was kind of disappointed, but it appears that it's really nothing. Well, I, I know the input we received earlier was for the comment period, so the comment period wasn't the video. I think this is the close of the comment period. Yeah, April 14th. Okay. So there may still be information coming down the pipe on what they implement, but. Again, after the comment period. Right, okay, good. I would ask staff if they got any more information or feedback. Um, mm -hmm. Just point to the and uh, definitely uh, mentioning your question to our uh, fire chief. Okay, it would just be nice to get more information. Thank you. I do agree with the things that I just want it seem like a, a feel good letter that really didn't say a whole lot of anything. Mm -hmm. Other than thank you for your input. Yeah, because I kept reading it going, okay, so it'd be great. And I'm like, oh, uh, the letter does make reference to the Farmers and Public Fire Safety Council, which is a separate organization. Okay. Uh, I'm just looking at it that. They just poured off with them for possibly uh, helping with the uh, material materials, and that would be communicated with fire department. Sure. So that would be the work they've done at those levels. Mm -hmm. uh, going out there in support. Mm -hmm. and I think it's it's a progress from my from my perspective. Thank you. I think the biggest challenge, especially the CLC. The cost of implementing the certification to the So that's just a direction to staff to work with us on this one. I will then call the vote. Councillor Buckle? Yes. Councillor Burns? Yes. Councillor Robinson? Yes. Councillor Rekishanko? Yes. Yes. Very good. Nine point two point one again is uh, from the special projects coordinator. I have a motion the council provide the use of the Golden Lake Community Center free of charge to the SPCA on May twelfth, twenty twenty two, from twelve p.m. to six p.m. Can I get a little bit of second? Then moved by Councilor Wright to twelve. Seconded by Councilor Burns. Comments or questions? Okay. I uh, just one. Have we are we running the program? And the amount of space to allow folks to have to go through the grant process. And then it's down to. So, uh, so they're just requesting the use of the building for the afternoon for free. 
uh, if they're using it, we're not able to do that process to go through the correct. For, for the mayor, the um, special projects coordinator has been working with the SPCA in, in regards to this event and in the process of learning some of the policies. And, and um, I would suggest because of the timing that um, council consider giving the permission that the grant application coming after the fact and just because of the time rate at the moment, but you are correct, Council Buckle. I just don't want to see this going for a policy that are really going to use this that are going to be on the same time too. But I do think it was time to just take a look at about this. Again, I would be directing this out to part of that. Yes. Yes. Councilor Burn? Yes. Councilor Robinson? Yes. Councilor Ray John Phelps? Yes. I mean, yes, that's very good. Item 9.2.2 is the AMO conference. I have a motion that council approves Councilor Robinson, and there's a blank there for any other councilors attending the 2022 AMO conference in Ottawa from August 14th to the 17th, 2022. I'm also already registered. Any other interest from the other council members? Uh, can I get a move and second? Move by Councilor Burke, second by Councilor Council Burns? Yes. Council Robinson? Yes. Council Rector Duncan? Yes. I mean, so seven. That brings us to bylaws. Item number 10. <laughs> Now, therefore, the Council of North of Lone Wilbur Force enact the following bylaws 2022-24, being the River Cassis, 2022-25, being a delegation of authority during the London Duck Council period, and 2022-26 is the use of corporate resources for campaign purposes. I have two questions. I, I, but can somebody explain the concept of the lame duck council period and why that's important? And the other thing too is, and it kind of relates to both the 25 and 26 resolutions, is when that period begins. Yes, Michelle. <laughs> okay, so uh, the lame duck or the restricted, uh, restricted uh, authority uh, period may begin uh, beginning of August 19th. So it's yes, three three quarters of the current council is not filed in a nomination period. Uh, papers we would be in the box size. So what was that again, sir? Three quarters. Three quarters of the current council uh, did not run the final nomination papers. Uh, we would be in the box or restricted authority uh, as of August 19th. So, so the, the, the um, period would start on August the 19th, on August the 19th, but if three of us decided to run for council, then we wouldn't be in a way back to the board. And, okay. and so what's the purpose of doing that? Um, so it's so that um, council, so, so it's to make sure that council uh, makes wise decisions and that um, yeah, it's, it's so that uh, members of the council that may not be may decide not to uh, run for council again. Uh, 
that they don't make uh, decisions that are not beneficial to themselves. The other uh, reason for it too is on council, especially if the majority of councillors weren't seeking the election, can't make uh, can't make unnecessary. I, I don't know if there's a better maybe or decisions that involve municipal dollars if they're not going to be around to answer to the public if if there's any questions on the on the spend. Which is why there's usually a delegation of authority to staff. So we've already passed the budget, and then we just pass that delegation of the staff that they can uh, fulfill the commitments that we've made on our budget. I think we're restricted as a council once election uh, nominations open to not spending more than fifty thousand. Oh, so, so. So but there is a provision in the, the, the bylaw that any budget uh, items uh, and so proceed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Councillor Burke. Yes. Councillor Robinson. Yes. Councillor Rick Yes. I mean, yes. That's scary. We have one matter of urgency, and it's a request uh, for a letter of support. I'll read the motion. Whereas the uh, Council of the Township of North of Nova Lower Force, <coughs> having received correspondence from the Eagan Island District Senior Citizens Needs Association, requesting a letter in support of their application to the Seniors Community Grant. Do you further resolve that the Township of North of Little Over for supports their application and that the clerk be authorized to send the letter in support? And it's coming forward as a matter of urgency because of the uh, <coughs> deadline on the grant application and uh, the deadline occurs before our next council meeting. So I'll move her in a second, or moved by Council Hearn, seconded by Council Fuckwell. Comments or questions? Buckwell? Yes. Councillor Burns? Yes. Councillor Robinson? Yes. Councillor Reddy Yes. And yes, that's scary. <coughs> Item 13.1, in regards to the Recreation Committee, I have a motion that Council supports the recommendations from the Recreation Committee as discussed at the April 11th, 2022 meeting to purchase two Fat tire bikes for the lending hub in the amount of $2,600 plus HFC from the recreation capital budget. And I got a move and a seconder. Robinson seconded by Councillor Buckwalt. I'll answer questions. Just for information and then just for clarity. <laughs> The discussion not amount of the recreation was nine hundred dollars per bike, and that was based on an estimate from the previous year. Uh, like everything else, unfortunately, the price of the same bike is three hundred dollars more, basically four hundred dollars more this year. That does not mean that we cannot look for a different bike, but it's just a it's a medium entry, entry bike in today. Thank you, Andrew. Any other questions? Mr. Buckwell? Yes. Councilor Burns? Yes. Councilor Robinson? Yes. Yes. And I'm yes. That's good. Thank you. Thirteen point two is the Senior of the Year Award. I have a resolution that council nominates, and there's a blank as senior of the year. And two names were put forward uh, Judy Sylvie and Denise Serge Dresser. I do remember that Judy Sylvie, I believe, was nominated uh, the senior of the year by BB last year. So 
Just putting that out there for Kenzie. Can anybody speak here on their behalf? I don't really know his stories very well. Mr. Robinson? Um, Denise, uh, she sits, she's been on the uh, seniors um, center. She's now on my own dear drive. Yeah, just off my Yeah. She's been always heavily involved in Meals on Wheels. Uh, they're the deliverer of meals. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, the, 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 yeah. And uh, certainly has always been actively volunteering in the community as well. Mm -hmm. I think we're both equally deserving. So I think all of them have been considered and we should uh, nominate the resident for one state. They both are. Oh, which you do you have? Do you have on yeah. No, no. Okay, so she doesn't have any here. But she did receive the award, I uh, believe, from BV last year. Last year. So, yeah. I was angry because of that reason to have an award. What the new Berg Stratford? Or Berg has a wonderful yes, Council Berg. Oh, yeah. sorry. Before you yes. see right, I didn't get that. Right, there are movers and seconders being moved by Council Berg, seconded by Council Robinson. Yes. Councilor Burns. Yes. Councilor Robinson. Yes. Councilor Lefty Shonko. Yes. And uh, that's that's fair. Yeah. So upcoming meetings and unpaid business. Uh, the next meeting of council, regular meeting of council will be May 3rd. 2022 at 7 p.m. Here's item 15, which is uh, closed. I have a motion that council move into closed session pursuant to section 239 2B of the municipal act <laughs> regarding two personal matters about an identifiable individual or including municipal or local board employees. And that we need. We're going at 7.43 p.m. Can I get a mover and a second? Moved by Councilor Reiki Schoenfeld, seconded by Councilor Buckwell. Councilor Buckwell? Yes. Councilor Byrne? Yes. Councilor Robinson? Yes. Councilor Reiki Schoenfeld? Yes. I mean, yes. Thank you, Chair. Just a reminder to turn off our provisions and forms. Okay. Well, welcome back. We are uh, now at a close. I have resolution 16.1 that staff obtain a formal appraisal on the land in question and that the land be offered for public sale for multi residential development only. And further, that provisions be in the public offering to permit the proponents to have the right to first refusal on the land. Can I move in a second? Move by Thompson Robinson, second move by Thompson Buckwalt. Council Buckwalt? Yes. Council Burns? Yes. 
Council Robinson? Yes. Council Rector Chonko? Yes. And the yes, Council Perry? Yes. Fifteen point two is a community grant. I have a motion that council approves the Boncher Museum community grant application in the amount of two thousand dollars. Can I get a move and a seconder? Moved by Council Burns, seconded by Council Buckwald. Council Buckwald? Yes. Council Burns? Yes. Council Robinson? Yes. Council Rekishenko? Yes. And yes. Ms. Perry, thank you. Item 17 is our confirmatory bylaw. I have a motion that bylaw 2022-27 being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of council for April 26, 2022 be read a first and second time this 26th day of April, 2022. Can I get a move and a second? Moved by Councilor Robinson, seconded by Councilor Schoenfeld. The third time we finally pass this 26th day of April 2022. Councilor Buckwell? Yes. Councilor Burns? Yes. Councilor Robinson? Yes. Councilor Lake Yes. And yes. Okay. And at this council meeting in thirds at 8.51 p.m. Can I get a more than a second and we'll have Councilor? Thank you, Sean Feld, second by Councilor Buckwald. Councilor Buckwald? Yes. Councilor Bird? Yes. Councilor Robinson? Yes. Councilor Rector Townfold? Yes. Honey, yes. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Yes.